you happen to have read the training reports in the third one talk a bit about how this guy has been a little bit more resistant than the others in the bit and a little bit harder to uh, I think I described him as a little bit like riding a pinball first few minutes of the ride so <clears throat> we're just starting out here and uh, we'll see what we got today it's Monday so he's had two days off which usually is not a good thing but you never know he's alone in here which I actually think is a good thing less distraction and he's actually starting out pretty nicely today I always let him I can walk a bit to just settle he's willing to walk unlike some of the others sometimes Gunport often won't walk in the beginning so we have to let her try in the beginning but this guy has a nice nice walk so right now he's thinking about the door Let's take a look at the camera here but I'm starting to, starting out trying not to get into any kind of a battle with him at all particularly with the bit or my leg as long as he's willing to go the basic direction that I'm asking him to go yeah nobody out there okay so let's see what we got today buddy with a small trot here I've got my hand on my little yoke because sometimes he makes a move for the door so far so good trying to drift towards the door a little bit but if we can maintain a rhythm in his trot of some kind then hopefully we hypnotize him into submission okay See, I'm pretty much letting him pick his head carriage. I've got contact. I'd be stupid not to at this point. But I'm not asking him to be round. I'm not trying to supple his body and do things the way we would with suave jazz. In a minute, he will be on the bed. He will connect a little bit more. And then I'll be able to use a little bit more leg. But right now I'm just looking for rhythm. Taking my hand off the yoke, widening them a little bit. Seeing if you can figure out that the bit actually more comfortable when there's a connection and it's steady on the bars of his mouth 
than when it's flopping around loose. Good boy. He's sucking back a little bit every once in a while. After he's cantered, his trot's going to be much more forward and connected in the bridle. But right now, we're just looking for rhythm, right buddy? a circle up here, which he's not going to really want to do either. Come on, buddy. Atta boy. Good boy. They sort of get comfort from being on the rail after a while. And then feel a little bit lost when you leave the rail. Start asking for other figures. Atta boy, it's okay. And that's where you start needing some aids. And they either accept them or they don't. So he's not a bad guy at all. He's just distracted and young. Now we're getting a little bit better quality in the trot. So he's marching forward into the bit. Then he loses it, loses his focus. Let's see if we can get that nice trot down this long side, buddy. When he puts his head up to look at stuff, he loses his impulsion. There we go. But the more he feels like he's working, he's got a job to do. Plus, his mind needs to wander. Okay, let's cross the diagonal. Yeah, you see those jumps? You're going to be jumping those in a minute. Okay. So right here, he wants to fall right. So I've got my right fist kind of jammed into his neck, not giving that rein at all. Asking him to bend right a little bit. A little bit of encouragement from the right leg, but not more than he's willing to accept. But he really needs to be on the aids and connected in order to keep him focused on his work. He needs that help. All right, let's go. And yes, we have a skid loader outside making some funny noises. Had a boy. Okay, so we stay up over the withers. Good boy. Keep the inside leg strong. Right rein solid on the neck. Good boy. Okay, so he was heavy in the right rein there throughout that canter. But he's got such a nicely balanced canter that it's fairly manageable. But sometimes after he pulls hard, he then doesn't really want to connect in the bed. So he starts moving his head around too much. So I wait. Let's wait till we get to the other end and do the other canter, bud. Good boy. Okay.
Okay, I caught him right there with my spur because I really didn't want him to break to trot. Pissed him off a little bit. Now we can settle. Atta boy. Atta boy. Now he's carrying himself. I've let go on the inside rein. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. That's much better. Okay. There you go. You can just listen to him snorting out all the tension. You're a good boy. Okay. Now we'll try to get the best canner we can before we trot. What do you think, bud? Good boy. I try not to lean back, stay up over my feet, use my lower leg to send him forward. And now he needs to go forward. Because Kind of sucking back and not trusting the connection in the bit, not pushing from behind. So, and it's usually the right side of his body where the problem lies. When I'm going to the right, you know, he wants to bulge his, his ribs to the right, like I think about 80% of horses do, whether they're race horses or not. So when you're going to the right. You have to get the right bend with the right leg and hold the right rein enough. And then once they get it, usually, good. Then we can soften the right rein like that. And everything feels good. Going to the left, it's the outside A's that are on the right that you usually have to work harder with. Now he would like for me to just let him stretch. And he would actually stretch to the ground here. And in a way, he would think, okay, well, I solved that problem. I pulled the reins out of his hands. So rather than letting him stretch right yet, I would like for him to settle into the connection. Realize that's another solution to his problem. Okay. And then it's not an insult to have a piece of metal connected to the bars of your mouth. Okay, so at least we want to give me a round circle with a rhythm, regardless of what your connection in the bridle is, as long as we're not fighting. Good boy. That's a little bit better. He doesn't like this corner, and when he gets up here, he always wants to go that way. Okay, let's walk. Again, I stay up over his shoulders a little bit with the downward transition rather than crunching down on his back. Okay. You can cut. So this guy did a little bit of jumping. I think he did two days of it. Not last week, but the week before. Last week we decided to just back off and work on the flat work. Um, he's obviously um, doesn't steer all that great, but he's real talent jumping. Just like he's got real talent in his trot and his canter and his walk. So we're just going to let him trot on up and show off his talent in the hopes that he goes the right direction. Good boy. Whoa! That's where the, the yoke comes in handy. <laughs> you got the full-on shot where he just sort of swerved one way, jumped the other way, and Daddy just had to hang on to the yoke. Yeah, so that he didn't get him too bad in the mouth. But that's alright. We're going to do that one again, bud. They don't really know that they're going to be jumping at first until they do a bunch of it. And then they get to the point where anything between two standards is like a magnet. Good boy. Okay, so a little bit of the issue is that we've got a door to the right and a little funny looking jump that didn't feel very good the last time we jumped it. So we'll just take make sure get a good approach. 
So what I'm going to do is let him walk, get lined up, and then see how we do. Okay, little buddy, you ready? Oh yeah, and you still want to go back to the door. Okay. I think we'll go the other way. Let's see if we can do it in a straight line this time. This is only effective at this stage of training if they like it. Good boy. Yeah, it's nothing but a canter departure. Good boy. Alright, we're going to do it like that one more time. That direction. for them not to learn to go around which is why I'm a little tough on him when he tries to run out bring him right back to the chute that we're trying to go between but notice there's the door to the right and it's awfully enticing Way. It's often a little bit of a reward. Let's see if we can do these again. That's a real jump. All right, and back. notice how wide my hands get at times. I try not to pull back, but I certainly don't want to go off the line. So opening rain is useful. Doing this until he feels like there's only one line to go on. It's the one that goes through the middle. That was nice. Okay. All right. So let's see if uh, it matters whether there's a back rail up. Might make it more fun. You never know. Come on, little mile.
there's two ways to proceed with him on his jumping. One is to back off and to do flat work and get his teeth done and just continue to wait for him to accept the aids so that we keep him straighter. And the other is to continue every other day or so, popping him over some X's until it's sort of a part of his regular routine. As long as he's not running out and he's not stopping and it's not causing discomfort, it's just like me staying on a straight line or a circle. You just every once in a while go over a little jump. Then that could teach him to lock on and the steering wouldn't be such an issue. So I think we'll probably do the latter. I think we'll since we're stuck in the indoor because of the weather a little bit, and we've got these little jumps set up here, we can just let him keep doing a little bit of that. And uh, my guess is that he'll stop questioning it. Um, he's just very, uh, it's part of the lack of focus. He goes down to the jump, and it's not that he doesn't really want to jump the jump, it's that he doesn't really, hasn't really decided he's going to jump the jump. And then when you ask him to stay straight or you use your aids, his first reaction is to resist. So, but that's babies, and it'll all come together. Some of them do it automatically. Some of them take a little longer. And I found that some of the best jumpers uh, are not necessarily the best when you start out. But I still like his attitude. He really, um, he's thinking all the time. He's quick. He knows how to use his body. He can get himself out of trouble, as he did there. And um, so, we'll see. Cut.